think, friends, thank you so much for joining us, for being a part of this real quick. We're doing it. A presentation today, plus to have one of our members here, part of our church family, Asa Desire, and she is going to be teaching us about hypertension, so the warning signs to watch out for, as well as how to get help. So, health is a good thing. I appreciate you being a part of this. Let's take it away. If you're here in attendance, give her a little bit of a round of applause. Hi, um, guys. My name is Adasha, and I'm a nurse. I'm a nurse at cardiovascular floor. I've uh, been a nurse for almost about five, four years. I want to go, go into the five years now, it looks like. Um, I'm currently right now trying to get my BSN. And uh, the class that I'm right now is called Community and Public Health. And uh, we are trying to create awareness about hypertension. So right now I'm going to be talking about hypertension and the name of that I put on my PowerPoint is called the good, the bad, and the ugly. So at the end of the presentation, I want to hear your thoughts about what was the good, what was the bad, and what was the ugly of hypertension. Um, I have passed around some pamphlets and um, an evaluation. I want you to keep that with you and uh, fill those out as we go through the presentation. And uh, one more note, I'm going to be asking some questions. This is very, it's going to be a very informal because I have noticed that when I'm talking to my patients, the best way for them to learn something is for you guys to ask me a question when you guys come up with it. If you guys want to write it down and ask me later, that's perfectly okay, but I will also be asking you questions. All right. So the first PowerPoint that we have here, it's about hypertension that is very prevalent here in the South. Do you guys know why is that? <laughs> yes. Um, so we eat a lot. The, that's not a problem. The problem is all the fatty foods that we eat. Not just that, we use our transportation, our main transportation is actually our cars, so we don't walk as much. We probably just go on, get in the car and ride about 10 minutes and then we get to our destination. <laughs> so, the next point in the PowerPoint is that the CDC has said that nine out of 10 Americans will develop high blood pressure. So that's about 90%. <laughs> That is a concern for everybody. The next point that we need to be aware of it is that here in North Carolina, 35.1% has been already diagnosed with high blood pressure. I mean, those numbers are elevated. So if we can create awareness about hypertension, we can probably get people to control hypertension or not to be developing hypertension. We can probably just avoid that step to it, and there is so many ways that we can do that. So, let's find out what exactly blood pressure means. What, people said blood pressure, I have high blood pressure, but do you actually know what it means? So it's the pressure that the blood exerts against the arteries. So think about, can you hear my back? Think about how much a wall of an artery is getting blood every, all the time actually. And um, I brought this, I don't know if you can actually see it, but this is a straw, very nice vessel. When I try to drink from it, I mean, I can get all the fluid I can, but if I chew it, if it is all wrinkled, do you think that you can get any out of it? Maybe some. So think about this. This right here is your vessels. If this is your vessels right here, 
And we are talking about that your heart is the pump and the blood vessels are all riggedy. They're not nice. How do how you expect to get all that blood flow in your body? Just think about that for a moment. We'll come back to that. So let's now know about the ranges of blood pressures. So blood pressure has two numbers. What are the two numbers that we usually look at? We have systolic and diastolic. Systolic blood pressure is the pressure that the blood exerts when the heart is beating. Diastolic blood pressure is the pressure that the blood exerts in the artery while the heart is at rest. So, diastolic blood pressure. So, our normal blood pressure that we wanted it to be our perfect blood pressure is 120 over 80. That's what we want to be, that's what we would like to be for our whole life. There are so many changes that our body goes through it, and these numbers are going to go up and down depending on our lifestyles, depending on what we do. We want to try to maintain these numbers. The next level of high blood pressure, we don't call it hypertension, we just call it high blood pressure because you are right there at the edge of going to hypertension. We, we can prevent things before it gets worse. So the elevated blood pressure, it's, one, it's 129, it's 120 to 129. So when it goes to that 129 right there, it's because we're doing something that is making our blood pressure elevated. It's, think about it as a, a dam in a river. If that dam in a river, it's continuously getting hit with the pressure of the water, eventually that, that dam will break. I mean, and we have to think about the, the blood pressure, that the pressure that the blood is exerting on our arteries eventually can have potentially break it potentially, it can just weaken. It potentially can form things in there that we don't want it to be formed, like blood clots in there as well too. So then we have the stage one and the stage two hypertension. Stage one, it's 130, systolic to 139, and diastolic 80 to 89. And the stage two will be 140, systolic and 90, diastolic. Stage one and stage two, usually we are going to give you some medication. You have to go to the doctor, go to your regular visits, make sure you do not get any higher than that. Like I said, taking care of your blood pressure, taking care of that pressure that you're putting on your arteries, it's very important and we'll find out why. So hypertension, it's called the silent killer. You see that black heart that I put in there? It's so pretty, isn't it? But that's not the color of our heart, isn't it? That's not the color we wanna see. So we call it a silent killer because we don't realize we have hypertension. Hypertension doesn't have any signs and symptoms, especially when it's in the 140s, we usually don't feel it. I mean, we might feel a little bit Maybe even energetic because we're thinking more pump is it's flowing through our, through our veins and stuff like that. But like I said, just think about it of something hitting your walls, your artery walls, and continuously doing that high rate is going to cause some damage. 
So heating at a constant rate is going to cause atherosclerosis, which is caused by the high blood pressure. It narrows your arteries. It makes then the elasticity of the vessel makes it uh, hard. So, and when you are pumping blood through it, when it's hard, these narrow vessels, cholesterol starts building in there because it's not flowing. Something is obstructing the flow. So now we have these narrow vessels with cholesterol building up in there. Blood flow is decreasing on your heart. Your heart is working harder. So what happens when your heart starts working harder and you're not getting enough blood flow? Here, not just in the United States, this is worldwide, number one cause of death. And I know it says in there United States, but actually I looked at it and it's worldwide. Worldwide is heart disease. Why do you think this happens? It's the heart that much problematic to care, take care of it? I mean, it's one of our main organs. You think we'll take care of it? The thing about having decrease of blood is that the blood carries oxygen to all our bodies. I know, and I'm terrible at drawing. So. What do you think your body does when it's not able to get all the oxygen it needs. Your body is smart and it's saying, I'm not getting enough oxygen. I'm going to just start cutting supply to those little other places that doesn't need it and I'm going to send it to the most important. Well, those little other things are suffering for not getting your oxygen. And we'll find out what happens then in just a moment. First, we're going to talk about a stroke and heart attack. How does hypertension causes a stroke and heart attack? I mean, it's just blood flow. How can it cause a stroke and heart attack? As it we, it does work harder, but that's not the reason. So this right here, as we can see on the picture, although it's not that big, but right here, you have been building that plaque because your vessels are narrow, so you're now building this plaque, and when it pushes really, really hard, this blood, the pressure is so hard that it starts loosening up this plaque, and a plaque just starts like randomly going through the bloodstream. So the body starts thinking, what is this plaque running around your bloodstream? It wants to catch it, and it catches it with a blood clot. So it forms this blood clot, and then it's randomly going throughout your arteries, and suddenly your arteries are narrow, and they're not able to go through. So they get stuck. Sometimes you get a thrombus on your leg. Sometimes it will get stuck in your heart, which will give you a heart attack. Sometimes it will get stuck on your brain, it will give you a stroke. So what happens if I get a heart attack? What exactly does heart attack mean? It means ischemia. It means that blood flow did not get to a part of your heart, which means it becomes dead. If tissue does not have oxygen and blood supplies, that part of it becomes dead. Same thing with the brain. If the brain gets the blood, it does not get 
oxygen through it, does not get blood flow through it, it's going to die. And the brain controls all our movement. If I do not have a part of my brain, I will not be able to move my hands. I will not be able to talk. I have patients that they're fine, completely fine. Everything, they can do that, but they cannot read because a part of their brain, a specific part of the brain got blocked by, by a clot and it has some consequence. There is two types of stroke. There is the ischemic stroke and there is the hemorrhagic stroke. So hemorrhagic stroke, it means that something has had had an rupture. Um, when your vessels are are weakened. When your vessels are weakened because it's been pounding, this blood flow is been pounding in that section. So this part gets weakened and finally it has had it. Finally breaks. Your vessels on your brain, they're so, so, so small and they're being weakened. And that's when you get a hemorrhagic stroke from hypertension. Next one will be aneurysm. Aneurysm is very similar to a stroke. And actually I have to look it at what was the difference between one and the other ones because they look about the same. It's a rupture of, of, your, of your vessel. But the difference is that with aneurysm, your vessel forms a bulge. Because this part right here was weakened, it decided to form kind of like a balloon here. But eventually this balloon is going to pop and it's going to cause an, a rupture and you're going to bleed out because this happens usually on the main arteries of your, of your body. Next thing, your kidneys. How can hypertension affect your kidneys? How can something as a blood flow can affect your kidneys? So there is two things. So when you're, you got vessels, artery vessels, all over your body, that's how your body gets oxygen. When this blood gets with such high pressure, it's going to mess up all your blood vessels. So your kidneys have the function of filtering your blood. So if my filter does not have nice vessels, if my filter has this type of vessel that is all wriggly, can I pass things through? It's going to keep wanting to keep pushing really, really hard, and eventually, I mean, it's going to make it completely not being able to filter correctly. So usually we have protein urea when we go to the bathroom. Usually, um, if you have very high blood pressure, you may sometimes see foam in your urine because you have high blood pressure. And if you're not able to filter the blood in your body, all that, all that waste in your body, you're going to have to have hemodialysis or PD. It's, you will have to have a tube in you that will have to be able to filter your blood because your body's not able to do it. I mean, you couldn't live with all that waste in your body. I mean, you have to get rid of it. I mean, whatever comes in, it has to come out. All right. So hypertension also can damage your eyes. We have blood vessels in our eyes. I have patients that when they have their high blood pressure really, really elevated in the 240s, 260s, they get blurry vision. They're not able to see. I mean, sometimes, hopefully, you know, 
most of the cases they get they get their eyesight back but there is damage in there already and eventually they can lose their sight the retina gets gets um decrease in blood flow when there is damage in your in the blood vessels of your eyes and your optic nerve gets damaged as well too so it's two things that gets damaged in your eyes So we talked about having oxygen to our brain and how much it could affect with a stroke. But do you know that it's not just a stroke the problem? There is being linked dementia with it. So if you don't have enough oxygen flowing in your brain, your, your brain is not able to have the thought process. It slows it down. And when it slows down, when things slow down, your brain is like, oh, we don't need this. And it starts little by little, your thought processes start decreasing. You start having a little bit of memory loss. You start having a little bit of not remember what's going on, what's happening. And eventually, it will create dementia. So, do you guys think this is the bad or is this the ugly of hypertension? All right, that actually was the bad. Because all these things, it has not happened yet. It's just bad. It hasn't got too ugly yet. So, uh, then we have now, there is some non-modified risks. There are some things that definitely we cannot change to make our hypertension better. And there are some modifiable risks that we can change. So if we are able to change the good ones, we can control the ones that we are not able to change. So the things that we cannot change is our age. I mean, as, as I said, as we get older, things tend to slow down for everyone. Same thing for our circulatory system. It kind of slows down a little bit. So we have to be careful. We just have to be on guard with that. Race. It does have an impact. So if you are an African American, it's, you, have, you can develop high blood pressure. You're more than likely to develop high blood pressure than a Caucasian person. Family history. If you have a family that has had high blood pressure, you can develop high blood pressure as well. Chronic conditions. If you already have a chronic condition, it's something that we're not able to change, to change it back to non-chronic. But like I said, all these things still can be controlled with the modified risk, or the modified factors. This is the good news. This is the things that we can change. These are the things that we can be better. We have overweight. Why is overweight so bad for us? It makes us slow down, it makes us more sedentary, it makes us create more fat in our body makes us scream higher cholesterol. Tobacco. Why is it so bad tobacco? You know, not just smoking, which actually smoking will hurt our lungs, but that's another story. <laughs> but chewing tobacco is a stimulant, nicotine makes our blood pressure elevated. We just talked about that pressure panning in our, our arteries. It's going to raise it up even higher. We don't want that. We want a healthy high blood pressure that whenever you're running, you're running and you're having 140s. We don't want it to be a 180. 
alcohol. American Heart Association recommends to decrease liquor for, for women just at least one, and for men two. Better none, but if you have to have it, you know, just because it also increases your blood pressure. I mean, having it once in a while is not bad. Just control. That's, that's the key of having a good blood pressure, control. Control on everything you do. Another problem that we have is that increase in salt. Why the salt is so bad for us? I mean, it's, 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 really, it's really bad for us. I mean, salt is just something that you put on your, on your food. Salt increases the, the fluid, increases the water retention in your body. When your body is retaining fluids, increases the pressure in your body because you have more blood in your veins because it's retaining all that blood in your veins so think about it your vessels are like this but now with all that fluid that you have it's a lot bigger and then it's just because it's being stretched because it's you have so much fluid in there build up it's stretching it's just keep pounding in there The recommended salt intake that the recommend the recommendation for salt for a day for daily intake is two thousand three hundred milligrams. Does anybody know what will be equal to a, to a spoon? How many spoons? Is, is, that, is that even a spoon or is that a teaspoon? That's actually a teaspoon. That's what it equals at one teaspoon. So let's try to decrease our salt intake. Now. What does potassium help in your body? Why we want to increase potassium intake in our body? It helps remove salt from your body. So, if you ever see a banana, go ahead and grab it. Eat it. It will be good for you. <laughs> it has potassium and it will help take some of your salt intake out of your body. There are so many other products that have potassium. So please look at labels, read about it, try to increase your potassium intake in your diet. It will help you, especially if you're eating a lot of salt. And I will say I'm guilty, and my husband will tell you that I do eat a lot of salt too, so I'm going to try to decrease my salt intake. Um, American Heart Association has said that using one of those other salt decrease on those the salts that they are they have like 50% less salt doesn't help that much just because you think it has less salt you put more of that salt in your so I don't know you guys will have to tell me how that works if you guys try the one that doesn't have much salt, or if you guys just decide to decrease your salt intake. I know that teaspoon doesn't seem that much. I mean, if you actually look on the, any frozen meals, salt intake is very elevated. So that's the reason it's, must, it's best recommended is just to cook your own meals. Don't get any frozen meals. If you have to have them in once in a while, it's not going to affect you, but try to keep in mind what you're putting in your body. Stress is our next point. Increases 
your blood pressure. Why? It's the fight flight that we are, that are what body wants to do. Like right now, before I start doing my speech, my blood pressure probably was through the roof. <laughs> but um, thank you, you guys. It has been very nice to talk to this group. Um, you guys have made me feel welcome. So my stress level has come down, and actually I'm feeling really well right now. <laughs> Let me inform you that. So try to create things that cause you less stress. Try always think about positive things. If you just concentrate on the bad things, your stress level is going to go higher. Try to give yourself five minutes, take a big deep breath, and think you can do it, and God is with you. And definitely, he will help you push through everything and every time. The next one is lack of physical activity. Oh my goodness. What we should do about that? Exercise, yes. How often? As often as you can, really. I know with COVID, it's been harder for us staying home, doing all that. But when you go to the grocery store, just park your car all the way to the end. So you walk all that and walk back for those grocery stores. Try to do as much as possible. Just try to make it a game. If you have kids, just tell your daughter that you're going to try to catch her. She'll make you run. I have an 11 year old and she definitely makes me run. Make her catch, make me catch her. So it's not just the exercise, it's just the lack of activity. Let's be less sedentary, let's move more. And the last one, high cholesterol. We just said that here in the South, it has, has more people that has blood pressure than the North or the East. Oh, that fried food, so good. That prime restaurant, it was so good. But I'm not saying to stop it. I'm just saying decrease it. And if you eat that day, try to do exercise that day. So it doesn't get, those deposits doesn't get in your body, at least you're burning it up. So put that in your mind. If, if you are eating something that is unhealthy for that day, I mean, it's okay. Just do exercise that same day and try not to eat a lot. Just do it a little bit, just control. All right, now is where we get the ugly. Hypertensive crisis. This is when we have to call our doctor. This is when we have to go to, the doctor will probably tell you to go to the emergency room. He may tell you, right, just take another dose of your medication or may tell you just go ahead and go to the emergency room especially if you are having extra size symptoms with it. Hypertension is not a joke. This hypertension can cause severe chest pain, headache, blurry vision, nausea and vomiting, shortness of breath, anxiety, seizures, and being unresponsive. It definitely got ugly, isn't it? So we have to be careful of how we do, how we control this. We never want to get to that point of 180, but we do need to be aware of what exactly hypertensive crisis is. We need to be able to know the symptoms, so if that happens. Sometimes, I mean, it may just happen. You don't realize it. Like I said, hypertension is a silent killer. You don't know it until you are right in there, in the middle of everything. So just be careful. Try to eat better. Try to do more exercise. And just try to relax and trust in God. That God will help you in everything you do. Thank you so much for my presentation. Have a good day.